So you want to know how to transition from the technical theater world to the film and video production world. I get asked this question all the time, and I'm starting to come up with an answer. I have a lot of friends who are in technical theater, some of them working on Broadway, some working off-Broadway, in a variety of different positions. Of course, I also have friends who are actors on stage and on screen, but for this video in particular, I'm really gonna focus on the behind the scenes elements of these industries and how you might be able to navigate this journey from one career path to another. Upon first glance, people would say that these two fields are actually pretty similar. While there are similarities in the content and storytelling, it's not necessarily the same thing when you go to apply for a job in theater versus applying for a job in film or video production. That being said, it's not impossible to make this switch and actually it's quite natural for a lot of people to work in both of these worlds. So if you're in the beginning stages of this process, I want to help you through it as someone who is on the film and video production side, but also understands the theater world from my contacts and my network there. So there's actually several different paths that you can take to get from the theater world to the film video world. The most obvious one that a lot of people would suggest is starting out as a production assistant on a TV show or a feature film to just kind of dip your toe into this field, figure out what the different crew positions are, what the set etiquette is, all the differences that come with that, you would definitely learn in a production assistant or intern type position. I wouldn't recommend this for everyone. I would say if you're in high school or college and you're just getting out there in the world, this is a great experience and I think everyone should PA at least once in their lives to just get that opportunity, get that experience. If you have been working in theater for a few years and you have a specialty or a craft that you've really been honing in on. I would say to actually find a comparable job in the film production world that you can kind of transition to. This would be a little bit more specific than just being a general PA. One great example is my really great friend Ryan, who I went to high school with. She was in charge of all of the stage management, crew, for every high school production that we did, and she actually went on to study technical theater in college. Now she's someone with a ton of experience and she actually was focusing on the props and set design world within theater. So when she came to me and asked for advice or any input that I would have as to how she might also take these skills into the film or video world, I thought it would be a great idea for her to just start right off in the art department. If she already had the skills of sourcing these really difficult to find props, or just the general idea of how something should look, how the frame should look, how the proscenium should look. You know, it's kind of a similar concept. I thought she would be fantastic for that. And she actually got her first experience on my thesis film at NYU, working in the art department. And you can ask her definitely, but I think she had a, a really great experience and learned a lot from the production designer and the art director who she was working with and went out to do those actual jobs on other films and be paid for that work. And I think that's because she had such a strong foundation in those skills and had a really good eye for things, really good taste, and was able to translate that into this world. Let's say you're not focusing on one specific craft or the job that you do in theater is so specific to theater itself that you can't translate that into film then I would say it's a good idea to actually intern or start an assistant job at a small production company and that way you can really learn in a more hands-on fashion because with a big film or a big TV show there's not really time for your supervisors or bosses to walk you through things or explain things or let you try different things out on your own. You're kind of stuck to the rigid schedule and structure of those big sets. However, if you're at a small production company, you're actually gonna get a lot more opportunities if you show that you are eager to learn, that you are humble, that you want to take on more projects, that you're hungry. Your superiors are going to recognize that because they work with you more closely 
and they will have the bandwidth to give you some more opportunities, kind of as a test, I guess, to see if you can handle it or if you're able to learn really quickly. Trying to work your way up the ladder on a big film set or in a big corporation is really difficult when there's hundreds of people working on those jobs and projects. It's unlikely that your supervisor or boss will really be able to walk you through things or give you additional information or insight into the process. There's just not time for that and everyone's job is pretty specific so you won't necessarily have extra time to catch up to everybody else. If you're at a small production company of five people, you can come in with a really good attitude and be ready to learn, be enthusiastic and excited about the opportunity, and just being helpful or proactive can go a really long way. You're more likely to get opportunities presented to you and how you handle those opportunities or challenges will really dictate how you will move forward in that company. If you want to get into the creative development side of things with film, TV, video, branded content, whatever it may be, then I think it's really important that you make something on your own. You can start building your portfolio even if you don't really know what you're doing. I would recommend watching YouTube videos, tutorials, maybe getting an online class for filmmaking, anything that you think will help get your technical skills up to the level of people working in the film and video production field. Alternatively, you can also pair up with somebody, let's say a camera person or a sound person, who can make your vision come to life. Let's say you have great ideas for these characters and you have a mood board and you have a concept for the lighting and for production design. Well. If you already know how that works in theater, then maybe you'll be able to communicate those same ideas to a cinematographer or a sound designer. Even if you don't have money or a camera, there are certain ways that you can find other people who are looking to build their portfolios and be a team and help each other grow. That being said, sometimes your portfolio never really gets seen. It depends on what you're applying for who's actually looking at your application, but it's always good to have in your back pocket in case someone wants to know more about what you're capable of creatively. So let's say you do want to become a writer or director in the film world, and you made a short film with your friends, and you feel that it represents your skills and your style as a storyteller. I wouldn't necessarily send that for an assistant job application because that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for a different set of skills. However, if you have that film kind of ready to go, you've been working at a small production company for a year already, and your supervisor asks you if you have any ideas for projects that you might want to produce, then it's a great time to bring out that film, show what you can do, and hopefully get that next opportunity. Just as it's important to focus on your craft and technical skills, if you want to be a storyteller, if you want to be in the film world or TV world, then you must also learn the craft of writing or directing in this particular realm. So writing a screenplay is different than writing a play, or writing a TV pilot is different than writing a musical. It's all somewhat similar, but very different formats, and there are certain expectations that people have when they go to see a play, versus when they watch a film. So it's important to study those. There's a ton of great screenwriting books out there. There's programs, there's fellowships, and learning the structure and learning the format is going to actually elevate your work and bring you up to the same level as your peers. So I know this sounds kind of difficult. I know it sounds like you have to put in the time and the effort, but that's kind of what you have to do with anything if you're making a big switch like this in your career. So I would recommend just going at it, being persistent, being enthusiastic, easy to work with. I think that's really half the battle. You know, if I am hiring somebody, I really want to connect with that person and see that they're actually invested in what we're doing as a company, that their values align with our company's mission, and that they're going to be a fun person to work with because you spend so many hours working on projects, you definitely want to have a team that will lift your spirits, be great at what they do, and come to work every day with a smile. 
And just remember that if you're coming from the theater world, you're already a creative person. You have that mindset. You have the ability to tell stories. And if you're a good storyteller, I think it should translate through any medium, any craft. You just have to believe in yourself and make sure you put in the work so that other people believe in you as well. So that's all for today, guys. I hope this was really helpful. I really think it's so exciting to come from the theater world and go into the film world. I originally started out doing a lot of theater in high school and found that film, TV, and video really combined all of my interests. So I think it could do the same for you and be a really great creative outlet. Thank you so much for watching, guys.